Yeah, the Lakeup Park was um, was a standalone commission mm-hmm. with the UP Public Art Program, um, and the Visual Language Project was the was the commission with which we developed Watershed Plus, um, and the lead artist role was something that was evolved, uh, which we had no intention of of undertaking, uh, but it, as Charles explained, it felt that something that we um, we laid out the theory and the philosophy, and we felt a kind of responsibility to to not just to give the idea, but to sh- to help it in its foundation phase, in its pilot phase, to establish it. The collaboration aspect is bringing specialist knowledge, but not just for the specialists. The way Tristan said, it's about these discussions that happen that you couldn't necessarily predict, and some would bring a way of thinking. That isn't necessarily their specialist, but because they're part of that whole group and have a way of thinking that is different, would really enrich that discussion. And it's something that was partly in the, um, the birth of the pub UEP Public Arts Plan, the way Paul Fesco is talking about, about the need to bring people with different view of things to complement what we're doing and make a richer result at the end. So. Chris Houston of Field Services says, this has been a real pioneering pioneering effort on so many levels. And was there any point where you thought, I'm not going to make it? What happened to get you through that time? I can I can think of one instance which was um, the problem to get over, which was um, we we felt it was very important that the person in the lead artist position worked within the building. Because the conversations you have at the cafeteria, in the corridor, or at the coffee machine, um, and even people come to your studio and, and talk, and and it may be about something in particular, it may not be, it may be something they've seen, and just want somewhere to share that particular thing. Or they've been, I remember one particular conversation, I think it was with, with Paul, and he'd just been to London, and he'd seen an Olafur Eliasson exhibition, and he shared the DVD, and it was, you know, there's that kind of exchange. It's not. It's never been a, a uh, we come and sprinkle the magic ingredients. I, I, I've never seen it like that. I think a lot of what happens with the projects we've worked on in the pilot phase and uh, the ones that other artists have been working on through the residencies and through uh, other projects through Watershed Plus, um, it's they, they form a relationship. It's a kind of a give and a take, and as much as as much as what that artist brings to that conversation, which is this kind of complementary way of thinking or, or, or working. If an artist is brought in to design an element with the engineer, some wonderful things can happen, but when you don't know and it's open-ended, it might be a bit more complicated, it might take a bit lo- longer, but the result might be even richer. Mm-hmm. Like the fountains, which initially were a group who came to our desk, our f- studio, <laughs> and ask us if we wanted to talk about how to design a decal on a hydrant fountain, a fountain that will attach to a hydrant. And that could have been done in half a day. Yeah. But instead, everyone in the discussion, in the team, saw the value of being much more than that. So how do you stop this? It's very difficult. Of course you can say, no, that's enough. I can't I'm commissioned to design a decal. Yeah. But then that relationship and trust and energy and motivation that Paul is talking about. It partly comes from there, the fact that you have all these people who are so excited about doing more than what they're just supposed to do. So um, Rachel Duckhouse um, says, my residency had a huge impact on my practice. It changed, uh, changed it forever, for the better, and years later I'm still reflecting on and responding to my time with you all. I'm still working with scientists and drawing. It began at Watershed Platz, so thank you very much. You know, that a residency isn't just about making something, it's about making new contemporary art, meaningful contemporary public art. Um, so we've, we help hopefully shape some of those projects with the artists to define how it's possible to do their projects. Resource it, connect them to people, um, uh, relate them to the things that they may not know, the people that they may not know within the organisation. So I, and I think that's what you see in Rachel Duckhouse's work. You know, it was, she, she hadn't done a residency in this way before. She hadn't made public artwork before, but she had a, a real fascination, intrigue, and, and a desire to learn and to relate to people. And 
it was uh, it was impactful for her, um, as she said. But um, you get the same response from the people in this organisation, I'm sure, when you ask them about the impact she had on their work. It it depends on the artist. Yeah. I think it depends on the artist, and you you try to create and foster the situation by which they can uh, explore the issue that they're interested in. And, and artists don't think in a linear way. The organisation thinks in a very linear way. So what you're what we're trying to do when we're working with the artist is um, is not direct them, but to to draw upon that. Uh, it, I think artists think in a very three dimensional way, and it kind of goes from here to here to here. So you you're trying to create the right touch points with the linear system um, uh, that's right for the artist and right for the organisation. And certain things latch and stick, and some things don't. And that's the creative process. I think it's just about adapting. It's very much like uh, any context-specific work where you have to adjust to that particular place. Working within an administration, a municipality, has certain responsibilities that you have to take on. You can't just be uh, aggressive about it. Otherwise, it doesn't produce anything and no one gains anything. So it's not... It's not um, oh, what's the word? It's not a compromise. It's just an adaptation to make the best work out of that context. Well, and it's these networks that are created where local artists have exposure to different ideas and different perspectives and different ways of working, and that collaboration that kind of results from it. I don't know if you've seen any exact examples of um, collaborations or results that have come from it, but this, this idea that we are in a little island in Canada is, um, is you're right, it's not true anymore. It's not true. Yeah. I, don't I think place is local. I don't think people are necessarily. Mm -hmm. I think artists, you know, you'll see artists that are here um, who've studied in Vancouver or in New York or, and they've come back and that's, um, Calgary's richer for that experience. And other artists that come and work here take something of what they've learned about here, like Rachel Duckhouse talking about her experience or um, Nick and Minty, they went on to do a huge water project in Scotland. Um, I, think, I think that's really the, the cultural world, that's the, the public art world certainly, is you work and have relationships with people in all sorts of different people, and you want to be part of that network. So as a Calgary artist myself, I want to be part of that network. I think what, what I told my, my 2007 Seven self <laughs> is... Um, uh, you, <laughs> this is going to take longer than you think, <laughs> but this is. Yeah. But it'll be bigger. It'll be much bigger. Yeah. And yeah. I, mm -hmm. you know, I think back to um, in the succession planning we've currently been doing. A lot of people have been writing for the program, and, and one of the uh, other um, examples or precedents that has been talked about a lot is the artist placement group from the sixties, seventies, and eighties, mm -hmm. where. Um, Barbara Steveny and John Latham established this way of embedding artists within different organisations, so ICI or British Telecom or ITV and in the UK. And I remember I was fortunate to hear John Latham speak one time and, and thinking, how do you do that? How, how does an artist um, become valued for their thinking, not just for what they produce? And how can they be effective in contributing to some of the important questions of our society? And I think that's one of the things Watershed Plus, for me, has enabled us to, to go to, is to really explore that question. And it's not, I don't say it's perfect in every aspect, but I think it's, um, I think, I hope it's contributed to the thinking around public art nationally and internationally, I hope, um, but that's for others to decide. <laughs> I would just would add one point on the I hope, uh, is that it challenges people and practices to think further than what they're already thinking, which is the way infrastructure is being created, but almost also how public art exists. I think it just creates a web of possibilities.